or Monday night meeting of the City Council. That will begin at 7 o'clock. Uh, this special meeting at 6 o'clock tonight is to discuss the 2000 fiscal year 2017-2018 budget requests from three different departments. Four different departments, I guess. Uh, water, library, finance, welfare, and IT. Information technology. So um, I don't think, do we need to take an official role of a special meeting or can I just note that we have a quorum present? Should be noted. Hmm? Should be noted. Should be done right. I'll note that all six counselors, for the record, are present uh, at the start of this special meeting, and a quorum has been established. And uh, so we'll get right into it. And the first department we're going to hear from tonight is the water department. What's new? It's out there too. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Edelman, welcome. Good evening. Good evening, Council. Um, wanted to start out, obviously for the record, Seth Nuttleman here to present the 2017-2018 uh, Water Department budget and represent the Water Commission as well. I'd um, like to just take a couple of quick minutes to tell you what's happened with the Water Department since I was here last year. And basically, um, water has been in the news. I think we all know about Flint, Michigan, lead, POFAs in the southern part of the state, things such as that. Just so that you know, we were fairly proactive in that regard. And we went around, we did additional lead testing besides our requirements. And we also uh, lead tested at the schools. Everything at the schools was non-detectable with the exception of a two count at the uh, high school in a, a slop sink type situation. And the school was notified of that. We also did POFA testing <coughs> in our water, uh, both source water and treated. There was a two count, um, that's parts per trillion, uh, in the surface water, and there's a maximum contaminant level of 70. Uh, everything else without the in throughout the entire system was uh, void of any PFOAs. So we're in good shape uh, there. We're also in the process, <coughs> excuse me, of putting out our consumer confidence report which will be out very shortly uh, both in the links online etc and we've created a, we've uh, completed another year without any violations and met all state and federal requirements for drinking water so we've got a pretty good comfort level there with how that year is closing out um, we're also just completing a third year of a leak study on the entire system uh, that's produced uh, one leak at the Weirs, a very substantial leak down off a of shore drive. Um, and the th last third of the system will be completed in the next couple of months. So the system is fairly tight. Uh, we don't know what the next substantial south end. leak where? Pardon me? Where? We had a leak in the Weirs on Lakeside Avenue, and then we had one out on Shore Drive. Oh, Shore Drive, okay. I'm sorry. Um, so that's uh, tightening up the system and uh, since I stood here last we've completed a couple thousand feet on Holman Street 2200 feet or so on Lakeside Avenue a short run on Tremont Street and replaced the backwash pump at the treatment <coughs> plant and had a little surprise situation with the Briarcrest tank that needed uh, some repairs due to some leaks so we took care of that uh, last fall. So that's all been taken care of. And currently we're working on 2,700 feet of water main on North Main Street, which I'm sure all of you are probably aware of. Uh, we are responsible for the traffic problem up there. Uh, I'd like to say that job's going well, but I can't. Uh, we've hit a lot of ledge, uh, even ledge in areas where we didn't anticipate to. We're right now tightening up on the schedule. Um, <clears throat> I think we'll still make it and have it trench patched prior to bike week, but uh, the job is not going smoothly due to ledge. Do you have to blast, uh, Seth? Uh, Busby's brought in a, a hydraulic hammer on a separate excavator, and they've been using that probably every third day, and that just slows the process down. So um, that's where we are right now. Um, the budget that I have proposed in front of you right now is a 2% uh, increase 
Um, basically, if you want to think about it, uh, 1% is about $27,000 in our overall budget. So the, uh, the additional amount over last year runs to about $52,000. And in that, we also have a $30,000 contingency fund. And there's about $590,000 in capital purchases being broken up between streets and vehicles and such. A question from Councilor Lemon. That's the last item I wanted to. It's page 154 of our budget books, which is your capital budget. Um, and I'm not sure whether you and Scott have had a chance to sort of connect on this, but the council has been talking about uh, for fiscal year um, 18, 19, stepping up our road um, investment. And I'm just concerned whether we're carrying enough here to, to be able to keep pace with the with what we're looking to do. So. We've had some discussions in that regard, both with Scott and with Wes. Uh, if my understandings are correct. Right now, you're looking at uh, design work for Court Street with construction next year, and then next year, design work on Union Avenue with <coughs> construction the following year. The Water Department doesn't have any problems on Court Street, and we're in the process of setting money aside for Union Avenue. And we are talking to Wes and company about which streets they want to do and in which order because it'll make a difference as to what the water department has to do. I thought Court Street was this year. Court Street's designed this year. So I knew that's best part of the bond that's in the budget book that you're working on right now. That's the, the you've got the two and a half million dollars in, in the bond. In the proposed, yeah. we have two and a half millions in debt in debt finance streets and we've got a million five fifty in cash. So collectively there's four million of which a portion is core street. So we're going right. out and do the design engineer on the full uh, fifty percent of the full length and we'll be uh, designing the hundred percent of the section from uh, basically Academy Street down to Durkey Street. I think Dur Durfee? Durkey Durkey Street. Yeah down there, that'd be the 100% build and we'll design the rest because at some point we'll have to do from the intersection of Main Street to Academy and then from, um, or, or New Salem, one or the other, I forget if it's Academy or New Salem. I, I thought in the talk in the West that they were gonna do Fair Street to Durkee this year. Designing it right now and planning for construction to occur when weather allows spring of next year. So the, bud the next year's budget, but the design's going on right now. We wouldn't have time to be uh, finishing the design and getting into the ground on that this fall. But it would be covered by this budget. Be covered by this budget, absolutely. So I think what Seth is saying is the water department doesn't need to be in the ground doing any infrastructure there, which is our big project next mm -hmm. year. We'll certainly coordinate with the water department on the smaller streets that we are proposed to be doing. And then he's already anticipating us doing the section of Union Ave from Busy Corner to Main Street the following uh, the following spring. So Court Street next spring, Union Ave the following spring. Following him. On, on the, the smaller streets, um, I'm just, do we have enough to cover the water cons considerations on the, the non-major arteries if that are coming up, I guess? And again, I think they, the Public Works and Water have been talking, so some of the streets that are identified here under the projects for Water, Merrimack, uh, Bowman, Franklin, Massachusetts, those are obviously in coordination and working with Public Works about what streets they're focusing on. We also coordinate that with the other utility companies to make sure that if Liberty Utilities or others have to be in there at the same time, uh, that they've all get plenty of notice. So some of these may shift around depending on priorities, but I, I think we've had a good conversation. And then once this budget is approved, we'll know exactly what we're targeting and what dollars we have going forward. Councilor Ballins. I wouldn't call this a word of caution, but um, I guess what I would like to look at in terms of any additional bonding for the roads at some point is what the projects w would cost and what we would be looking at because I might consider something less than two and a half million dollars. I might, I might not consider that at all. So I just want to have some kind of a breakdown for um, for those projects that we would be anticipating, and so we'll know what we have for one and a half million dollars, what we have for two million dollars, those kinds of 
I think we can give you a sense of that. That's more of a public works question, but yeah. water uh, certainly. Uh, well, and, that, and, and that was something that Seth brought up. They wants to make sure if the, we came out as the council's decision and said, here's $10 million on July 1, that he's in the loop and has the wherewithal to keep pace because it wouldn't make sense to go ahead and jump ahead of where the water department is. So right. knowing this year it's $2.5 million debt service, one point five cash, we're very comfortable. But as the conversation evolves, we'll certainly get a sense <coughs> of where the council's going this year or next year and we'll make sure that we're all on the same page uh, Seth my annual question um, can you give me the revenues from Guilford and Belmont I can get those to you basically they've stayed about the same uh, Belmont's running about 1% of our total revenue as far as consumption goes and Guilford is running about 3% but I can get you actual hard dollar numbers if you'd like and Thank they've you. stayed that way fairly consistently. Thank you. Go on. Okay. Thank you. Um, so again, um, if we want to stay talking about the capital budget right now, if you, if you'd like to stay there, um, again about five hundred and ninety thousand dollars in capital, um, hydrant upgrades and um, gate upgrades all things that we've seen in the past motor upgrades the one large item that'll stick out at you is hundred and twenty thousand dollars for a new backhoe uh, the current backhoe is a two thousand and so it'll be 18 years old by the time we replace it it uh, hasn't given us any problems yet but it looks like it's time um, the rest of it a pickup truck some service trucks um, some processing and uh, lab equipment for the treatment plant and that's pretty well it as far as purchases goes uh, the projects Merrimack Street uh, that's one that's in conjunction with Public Works we've got some old pipe on that street and so we're planning on taking care of that Bowman Street we're gonna do um, both in regards to public works in the sewer department sewer departments looking at some design work right now for Bowman and public works and the gas company are working on Adams so it's a good time for us to take out that piece between South Main and Bowman I'm sorry Adams Franklin Street we just walked it last week uh, the gas company looks like they're going in there this year and then in the spring we'll be in there to do some pipe replacement prior to what looks like it's going to be a reclaim and overlay for the whole street by the time the gas and the water get through there and then Mass Ave is uh, something the water department's doing solely on its own it's a couple hundred feet at the end of Mass Ave the roads in good shape but we've had three water main breaks there in about three years um, so the pipes uh, giving us a little bit of problems and I'd like to get that taken care of is that on the lower part of the very lower part towards the lake by the sewer lift station yes any um, questions with regard to the capital budget go back for an operating budget question sure right. through some stuff the uh, the two percent increase in um, expenses in terms of rates what's your or the consumer end what's your outlook on that I don't anticipate a rate increase in this budget and I'm hoping not a rate increase in the following budget um, the water department's doing fairly well as far as reserves I don't know if you've seen our financial statements but keep in mind that that financial statement looks very good <coughs> however coming out of those funds are looking like a little less than a half a million dollars for North Maine and about 850 or 900,000 for the Long Bay tank, which is scheduled for a rehab uh, starting August 1st. So, in terms of just the fact that the, if you will, the balance sheet of the water department looks pretty good, you th even taking on those, we're not going to have a rate shock kind of thing coming beyond that. I don't believe so. Um, and again, it will depend upon somewhat on what the council decides as far as. Uh, bonding for streets because we'll have to keep that in mind whether we decide to do a bond or whether we raise the rates and hopefully can keep the income flowing in to offset the expenses and for the benefit of the public in terms of our water cost comparison um, can you refresh us on where we stand 
Yeah, we're in, uh, we're in very good shape. Uh, DES did a rate survey of about 115 uh, different water departments throughout the state. And we ranked at that point in time the ninth lowest out of those. And even after our rate increase in 2016, it only brought us up to 13th. Out of 150, we're 13th. 120, left. something like that. Okay. Uh, basically, your average family of four is running a water bill of about $250, $260, comes down to about 75 cents a day. What, what did uh, uh, Lakeside Avenue cost the water department, Seth, do you know? Just shy of 400000 and we have a commitment through the Public Works Department because we're contributing to some of the uh, asphalt costs between Tower and Foster okay. due to one of the reasons when we had the break and part of the determination to continue farther down the street was water-driven. Uh, 400,000. The, the pipes going up Tower Street, are those uh, going to need to be replaced? Or? Tower Street, we're all set. All set on Tower? Yep. Okay. Yes, I think, isn't that one of the ones that are going to be paved this year, Tower Street? I believe it Doing is. Doing a couple of good sized patches, but I do not think it's slated to be paved from top to bottom this year. Okay, because that one's pretty bad. Some deep holes in that day. We'll take care of the more significant issues, but again, I don't think it's a complete paving on, on tower. Any changes in personnel? Uh, no, there hasn't been any changes in personnel since we added a fourth person to the office two and a half years ago. <coughs> and explain this, I assume you provided this on the personnel sheet, page 144. What, what, uh, Why are all those steps listed there? What is the point of that? Uh, basically, that's the way we've always submitted our payroll sheets. It gives you a breakdown of the salaried positions and their proposed uh, cost for the proposed budget year, as well as a list of the positions, the total steps, and what those employees can make depending upon where they are in that particular uh, pay range. All right. So take the top line that the, the uh, chief operator there mm -hmm. is on grade 15 but there are only nine steps so what does what does that mean there's classifications is each job has a grade assigned to it and then it has steps within that grade so a, a job can be classified as a certain grade you can see you've got uh, the so top four people under that chief treatment plan operator are all a grade 15. Mm -hmm. So they all make somewhere between 2361 and 2946? That's correct, depending upon years of service. Okay. So do we do that with other departments? We do. You, you've seen that in the, uh, the wage and compensation plan. Uh, you've seen that, or the compensation and classification plan, I should have said. It's included in all of our uh, employee contracts. So we put a grade depending on the skill set and the job requirements. So the, the more requirements and education level, the higher the grade is to it on Oh, it. I understand that. I'm just talking about... They're included in our contracts and... In this, in, in, um, this is in essence showing what the pay scale is for the water department, but we do that for all of our employees in the city as well. Let me just present it a little differently. We don't include it in the budget book per se, but it's included in the contracts, which are all available online. I'm asking if it's in the budget books. No. Yeah. Well, That's what I'm saying. Why is it here? And We do it by individual position and where they stand. If you look, for instance, on page 92. 92? You'll see the public works, and it lists every position that we have and what the grade is and what the step is that the person is at that position. They just present theirs a little bit differently. They, they've showed all the steps that are available. We show the actual step that the person is yeah. on. So I'm asking right. why. That's what I'm trying to get at. Is I guess why, I don't have a good why answer Why does yours you? not tell us which step these people are on? I, I can do that. that. That's not a problem. It's just I, I don't know why it is that way. Okay. It's always In been, that way as, far as, yeah, as far as I know. As far as I know. Um, but we can change it if that's what you'd like. I mean, it seems like if we do it on the, all the other departments, we know exactly what the wage is for, not by name, but by title and position, that we ought to have that same information for the water department. We can get that out in an in a email with the administration <coughs> specifically. 
Okay. Sorry to die. No, that's quite all right. And the other, you mentioned you've got two other projects. One was a rehab of the Long Bay t storage tank, and what was the other one? Uh, going forward, the ones we completed, we had a tank rehab for Briarcrest that we completed last fall. Well, when, you, when you said how much money you had in reserve, you asked us to take into account that you were going to have to spend... I think you said... $500,000 for North Main Street, the work that's being done right now. Okay. It's basically going to be coming out of our, our bottom line or our available funding. And then about $900,000 for the Long Bay tank. Mm -hmm. So there's... And what is the Long Bay tank? Uh, the Long Bay tank is a half million gallon steel elevated storage tank that is actually over in the Long Bay Association. Uh, and it's put over there not so much to deal with pressure because it's on the same gradient as the rest of our tanks but it's there in case of a fire situation you can get water if your source is closer to your fire you can get the water out faster the old tank that used to be at the end of uh, okay. Lafayette, Lafayette so these Street. are these projects that were budgeted for in the current fiscal year uh, some of them were the Long Bay the funding primarily for both North Main Street and the Long Bay Tank is coming out of capital reserve money. The board's going to vote to transfer it out of savings into capital reserve and then vote to transfer it out of capital reserve to the individual project. Um, the <coughs> Long Bay Tank was not something obviously we can just throw in $900,000 in a current operating budget year. What the board historically has done is tried to foresee long-term capital expenses, did the rate increase a couple years ago, um, saved the money, and now is expending it on, on what needs to be taken care of for the system. Does the Long Bay uh, tank service a, a larger area than the uh, Long Bay development? It doesn't. It gives us additional storage capacity for everything that's on that primary quadrant, Stark Street, but it does not serve an isolated area. That water can actually be taken. If we have a water main break, if we have something like that, we can isolate and take that water and move it down towards North Main Street if need be. <coughs> um, okay, anything else? Questions for Seth? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your coming as well as the commissioners. Thank you. Uh, where are we going next? Library, Mr. Moriarty. Which page? 70? 70? 70. 69. 69. 70. Mr. Burrow is here also tonight. Welcome. Uh, yes, good evening, Councillors and uh, Mayor Engler. John Moriarty uh, speaking as Chairman of the Laconia Public Library Board of Trustees. And In fact, it is true I am joined here this evening by our Library Director, Randy Burrow, and our City Council Liaison, Councillor Bear. Uh, so uh, I don't think there is uh, too much to say about the library budget, uh, representing less than 1% of the city's budget. Uh, hopefully we'll take less than 1% of your time this evening. Uh, <laughs> I would like to credit the, the library staff, the director, and the, uh, the board of trustees for, uh, I think, making some good decisions and exercising prudence in uh, how we allocate and, and use our financial resources and uh, address the, uh, the informational needs of our citizens. Uh, if we look at the details of your budget, uh, of our budget first, uh, I think we're looking, it's not quite a level funded budget. I think if you were actually were to do the math, uh, we have an overall decrease of approximately one half of 1% from last fiscal year, uh, from 849,000 down to 846,000. Essentially, we saved about $6,000 this year through some small personnel changes, uh, and uh, that was somewhat offset by the fact that our non-labor costs were increased by about $3,000. 
So to, to tune into those uh, in a somewhat more granular fashion, uh, the savings on labor, uh, we had, uh, and I think this uh, speaks well for our library, uh, we, we had up until last year three <coughs> credentialed librarians with terminal degrees in library science, in other words, master's level degrees in library science. And uh, they served the overall library population, the hard to reach teen library population, and the overall adult library population. Uh, one of those individuals uh, had some career growth and is now the director of the Plymouth uh, Pease Library. So it's always nice to see that uh, our people have learned and, and uh, grown in their professional careers and uh, have sought and, and uh, been awarded with various uh, growth opportunities. Uh, this gave us an opportunity at the Laconia Public Library to think, well, what, what is best in the long term for our library and patrons? And uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, we have a track record of slow turnover, uh, which is a good thing in this case. Uh, we, we have a staff that meets our needs very nicely. And uh, uh, yet if we look down the road, it's an eventuality that we can be somewhat certain of that at some point in time, the extraordinarily critical age group of uh, children's library and children's literacy will at some point in time retire. And uh, we think that it would be prudent to have a degreed terminal degree, master's level, uh, librarian servicing that important age group. So with that, we did not, we did not rehire that terminal degree for the tween librarian, the, the teenage librarians. Uh, instead, what we did is uh, hire two very competent people, again, in the context of all the conversations about uh, attracting people to Laconia and retaining good employees, both at the city and in our school systems. I'm really thrilled to say that Laconia Public Library was successful in attracting uh, some talent from the Concord area, from Bow, uh, and in fact, a resident of Sandwich uh, now represents the two new staff members that we have. And they are bringing a wonderful amount of energy and enthusiasm to uh, what it is that we try to do at the library. So that's the, the changes in staff. Uh, and again, that represents overall a very small $6,000 savings to the taxpayers, but we'll take every dollar we can get. Offsetting those, as I said earlier uh, in my remarks, uh, we have a non-labor cost, an increase of about $3,000 in two line items. Uh, please note programming and internet access. Uh, it is true that uh, as our digital demands increase, our bandwidth was uh, becoming inadequate. So we did, uh, in Metrocast, Cablevision is our internet purveyor. Uh, we, did, uh, we did substantially increase our bandwidth so that all of our patrons can sign simultaneously have uh, adequate throughput. And in addition to that, we've also increased our programming line item. Uh, I don't have exactly this year's numbers to date. I can tell you the previous year, uh, we did uh, 446 programs uh, during the course of the fiscal year. And I think that speaks really well of the library staff and volunteers to put that kind of programming in front of our citizens. Uh, calling special attention to our most recent program. Uh, the Brattle Bookstore uh, from downtown Boston was in town talking about vintage and collectible books. And in, in that somewhat specific audience, we still managed to attract 56 citizens to uh, hear what the program had to say. Uh, speaking of, uh, of digital uh, programming and content and bandwidth, uh, one, of the, one of the new things we tried uh, 2000 what year is this? 2015 was our first, 2016 was our first full year uh, of programming with Hoopla, which is an online content service. Again, talking about ways to reduce our, our uh, burden on the taxpayers and think somewhat more regionally. Uh, we, we are using an outside source called Hoopla. It's not all that different from Netflix or some of the other uh, things you might be familiar with from wherever you are. You can use your library card number to access uh, movies, television shows, ebooks, and audiobooks, uh, as well as music. And our growth numbers there, uh, let's see, our first year was about 3,000 uses this year to date. Uh, were about 1,500, so we're on track for 45, 4,600 uses this this fiscal year. Uh, so that's uh, that's a pretty substantial growth curve. And let's see, what else did I want to tell you? Uh, we try to we try to uh, this budget continues to focus on uh, both print and non-print. Uh, 
users of the library. Uh, I think it's a terrific number. I looked this up this afternoon. We have, uh, in a city of a population of approximately 15 or 16,000 people, we have 6,000 library card users. And just in case you were wondering, if you don't use your library card, it expires. And we're not counting that in the, in the number of non-active uh, library card users. That's 6,000 active library card users in a population of 16,000. I think that speaks really well of our library staff and resources to have that kind of usage. <coughs> And uh, so I think that, that highlights uh, everything that uh, is in this budget. I'd be happy to answer any questions, or if you have questions for Randy, he's available as well. Okay, Mr. Councilor Hamill has a question. John, um, <clears throat> are you going to be doing any programming uh, still at the Goss Reading Room? So I usually see something in the budget about that, but I haven't seen, I didn't see it this year, so just we, curious. We, we find that to be a very difficult uh, essence to attract the citizenry to. Uh, as you know, a few years ago, we really stood on our head. We went out of our way to, to move programs to Goss. What we found is some of our program attendance numbers actually went down as a result of doing that. Uh, we've encouraged uh, various uh, user groups around the city to utilize Goss. Uh, we've been willing to change uh, or you know to make the, the library available after hours. But at, at this point in time, uh, when it comes down to maximizing tax dollars, uh, we continue to operate the Goss Reading Room as a going library of the city of Laconia, but we give the people what they want, which is uh, larger, larger meeting spaces with more amenities. So it is true, Councillor, the bulk of our programming is on the Gale campus. But you will still have the Goss Reading Room open? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, John. Did a good job. Thank you. Yes. I chime in on one thing. So in my uh, budget review with Mr. Moriarty and our library director, I want to draw your attention to the second line up from the bottom is listed equipment. Yep. The request was $10,000, and it's reduced to 5000 It's not because it's not needed. As I shared with the council and the mayor back in April, that we'll be bringing forward some recommendations on use of impact fees, and the recommendation will be coming to pull 5000 of library impact fees to make that line item whole again. But in trying to pull everything together, you'll see some of those request as we go through some of the various uh, well, budget That's why your bottom line looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> volunteer that. <laughs> no, that was actually in addition to that. So uh, it <laughs> makes it look even better. I was going to ask you if there's something you wanted that the manager didn't want to give you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but that's a loaded question, isn't it? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, go I, ahead, Council. I have a question just about the population that folks who have cards. What are the rules? Do you have to be a uh, Laconia citizen in order to get a library card? We will let non-residents buy a library card subscription for the year. And I don't honestly know what percentage of that uh, our library card number is. But a, a overwhelming majority of our users uh, are all Laconia residents who are using free library cards supported by tax dollars. To get, a, to get a free card, you have to be either a resident, you can be a student, um, like at the community college. Um, as long as you're a taxpayer-owned property um, or work in Laconia. So in addition to living in Laconia, those other categories. There's, there's other you criteria. You get a free card. The non -resident. Employee of the city of Laconia, you can get a card. Yes. Yes. Employee of, of any anyone that works in Laconia, you can get a card. Um, or a set of student, taxpayer. I, I don't want this to be part of the budget process, yes. and I don't want you to do it, but tell me where I can find the rules and regs for getting a library card at the Laconia I believe library. that they're in our, our library policy, which is on our website. Okay. How is the, uh, how is, would you two characterize the physical plant as holding up? Well, you recall that it, uh, the, the, and the Gale uh, room is 1903, a substantial renovation addition in uh, 2005. Uh, so we're looking at a you know a 12 year old facility. We have replaced the carpet. We've replaced some of the plumbing fixtures. We've had some sewer work done. We've done constant maintenance on our HVAC mechanical system. Uh, so I would say it's been well cared for. Uh, I think we've had some uh, some wear and tear on some of the exterior elements. For example, uh, our 
our main staircase to our front door was showing signs of scaling and uh, deterioration. We, uh, we had an estimate of $100,000 to fix that staircase. Yes, I did say $100,000. Uh, but we worked with, uh, with one of the original contractors, Bonnet Page and Stone, who found a, found a $1,000, and I'm not making these numbers up, a $1,000 solution, which has lasted all winter very nicely. I can't predict how long those kind of solutions will last, but uh, Randy and the staff are keeping a, a close eye on things. Uh, one of the conversations that we've had recently, especially in the context of the Eversource re-electrification process for all of downtown and the easement. Uh, I assume you're aware that there's a, a potential easement on the table with our, uh, with our parking lot for Eversource to do uh, some switching. And uh, so we're trying very hard to protect that uh, parking lot, which I think dates to 2001 or so. So we, we're watching that. Uh, we'll certainly keep anything that looks like it's going to rise to the CIP level well ahead of the curve. Um, that's, that answers the physical plant concern, I think. Uh, the one thing that might fall under capital uh, planning might be uh, computer infrastructure, servers, and, and our catalog system, which is also in the neighborhood of 17 years old. We spent $100,000 on that digita digitization project back in 2001 and two. Uh, I don't think we're looking at any kind of numbers like that, but we'll certainly, again, keep ahead of the CIP curve on that. How is climate control on the bottom floor? Works. Yes, it works. Yeah. Yeah. We have to run the heat throughout the year, <coughs> sort of off and on, to keep the the dampness down down there. But that's the way it was engineered, and and it works. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if I if I may answer Councillor Bounds' question, the the only thing that we didn't ask for uh, is. Uh, and, and so the, to answer your question, the manager did not deny us it, but uh, we are forever grateful of our rapport with the Laconia Police Department. We have a very safe library, but with some of the challenges that we've had, uh, it wouldn't hurt our feelings to have an even greater presence uh, in that capacity. So I'll just quietly slide that out into the, into the universe. Well, I'll make a okay, note. Okay, anyone else? Questions, comments? <coughs> All right, thank you both. Thank you all. Okay, I'm assuming that the last three items are all going to be covered by Mrs. Woodeman. Can you hear me okay? I can't get my microphone. No, barely. Move closer, please. <laughs> Can I take yours too? Oh, great, great. All right, first I'd like to direct your attention to page 25, which is the information technology budget. And... Um, as you may or may not be aware of this year, we had some staffing changes in that area. Can I interrupt for just a second? Sure. For those of you who are standing, there are some excellent seats in the front row here. Anybody would like to take advantage of those? Or four or five or six empty seats in the front row. Oh, the superintendent is not shy. He'll, he'll sit down. <laughs> One more down here. Anybody brave enough to sit there? Rick has only bought, bitten one person so far, so. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, so once again, we're on page 25, which is information technology. Um, as some of you may be aware, we had some changes in staffing in that department <coughs> this year. And until uh, those changes occurred, we were sort of in a status quo, but we're back <coughs> up to full staff and I'm very pleased with what's been going on in that department. This particular budget costs, covers the cost of the com city's computer network, um, the website, the email, GIS, as well as software licensing and programming. Um, the request this year is for 175,000 as compared to last year's budget, which was 180. Some of the projects that we've completed this past year is we did an upgrade to email, we did a new website, which will be rolled out in July. There's been extensive time spent on that, um, as well as updating documentation and, and getting the staff up to speed. We've also looked at ways to decrease some of the user licensing fees, and, and, and uh, the new IT specialist, Nick, has done a good job in trying to curb some of those expenses. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions on the information technology budget? Councillor Hamill. Donna, um, 
does the IT personnel do they keep track of uh, like if they have hits on trying um, people trying to access our system not in a legal way <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if they keep that information. I can certainly check with Nick. I know that we do have a lot of firewalls and, and increased security with all the things that have been going on. Um, he's constantly sending out emails to folks <coughs> telling them if something looks suspicious, you know, don't open it. And I have a meeting with him and Mainstay um, on Wednesday to go over some of the more ways that we can protect the city's um, infrastructure and just make sure that we're properly guarded. Okay, I'd be curious if uh, if that's if they can account for that, uh, especially w what's been going on uh, worldwide with uh, these ransom when he, malwares. When that notice came out about the whatever the name of that was last week, Wanna Cry or something. Wanna Cry. He was he can access from home and he immediately went online to make sure that everything was where it needed to be and that um, we were not subject to getting any um, you know data compromised or anything okay great thank you <coughs> any other questions well, Henry? Councilor Lipman has a question in that same vein do you know um, in terms of audit control procedures whether our auditor has any um, thing in their upcoming work plan on that or if we can maybe add that as a I know that last year they did meet with the IT specialist um, and there is a form that they did have to fill out as part of the audit process. I'm not sure in light of things that have been going on in this past year if they're going to increase that level of interest. They're scheduled to be here uh, May 30th for a couple of days so I can certainly check with them to see if they have any concerns. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay. What are, what, where are we going next? Page 45. 45. This is the um, employee benefits, and your first line there is your Social Security, which covers the FICA and Medicare costs for all city departments, except for public works, solid waste, and the enterprise funds. The budgeted cost estimates include steps and COLAs, as agreed upon in the union contracts, and currently we have two unions under contract. However, in preparing this budget, we've assumed, we've made some assumptions here that hopefully we'll have contracts with all, all other unions before we get to the new fiscal year as you can see that so the assumption made here is that by the beginning of the fiscal year we will have in place all four union contracts on the same terms roughly we're hoping yes that's what we're hopeful um, and there's really no significant increase it's actually estimated to be down a little bit and that's primarily due to some staffing changes that we've had over this past year and people coming in at lower pay scales as they are new employees to the city um, the next, do you have a question, Henry? Nope. The next line is the health insurance, and the cost estimates is a 4.8% decrease over fiscal year 17, and that's primarily due to switching plans to a, um, it's called a super plan, and what that means is when you go to the doctors, you, instead of a $20 copay, you have a $25 copay. If you choose to uh, go see a specialist, it's a $50 copay along with um, a $2,000 deductible per person and I believe it's 6000 per family. There's also an increase in prescription costs and the estimates that I have here are based on the uh, enrollment figures as of March and I will update them again as we get closer to June. Paul is, will provide me with that information. Um, this health insurance includes all employees in City Hall, the library and parks because police, fire, public works, solid waste, sanitary sewer, and in internal service fund, those expenses are all included in their own budgets. Did you say 4.8%? 4.8%. The employee contribution remains at 10%, and this is based upon the current um, enrollment as well as the includes people that may have chosen to opt out. And as we know, that can be a kind of a moving target depending upon how, you know, people's lives change <coughs> and we're actually budgeting about thirty thousand dollars less for fiscal year 18 on this line item as compared to fiscal year 17 any questions all right 
Um, the next line item is the retirement line item. And that, once again, includes estimates for New Hampshire retirement for City Hall, Library, and Parks, whereas all the others are included in their individual budget. This includes steps and colors for those employees within those departments. And it's based upon a calculation of taking into account the increase of to 11.39% for Group 1 employees. So even though we're looking at an increase, the, the amount is basically level? Pretty much, yes. Um, well, how can that be? <laughs> the, uh, the retirement system is broken up into four groups. Within it, Group 1 is teachers, and then the second part of Group 1 is other municipal employees. Group 2 is police and fire. This was the smallest increase of the four groups that were out there, and then this was just a <coughs> reflection of current payroll. So as we've had some attrition, some job re you know, replacements, people starting in at a lower So our payroll has actually gone down. So our payroll's down, offset. I think the increase on this was just a little over 2% for this group. It went from 11.17 to 11.39. So this one was, was relatively small. The others, we had some double-digit increases in other uh, police and fire, and I believe the same thing on the school budget with teachers as well. Yep, but uh, even though that's uh, a small increase probably from last year to this year, from if you go back to 2013 to four, in four years, that line is doubled in retirement. So The rates went up. Uh, the yeah. rates, yeah. I wouldn't say a double. You had 200. You're at 200,000 in 13, 14. You're at 267,000 right Almost. now. So it's yeah. a 30, for 30 to 35 percent increase over the last five budgets. Yeah. With basically a stable payroll. Yeah. Pretty stable. And again, you'll see the individual retirement system line items at the public works, police, and fire budgets. This is for city hall, library, parks. <coughs> Next. Any other questions? Okay, any other questions about the uh, benefits page? Oh, sorry, Councilor Bonds. Okay. I'm not understanding the um, difference between um, the department request and the manager's recommendations. Is that just numbers? Uh, uh, how do we get there? So what will happen is we have departments who start working on the budget uh, back in December and have information into to the finance director and her team in finance. They start assembling everything and have a working draft to me usually by late January. We've plugged in certain payroll uh, assumptions based on the current employees we have at that point. As we get a little bit later in the process up until the time when April when we, I present the budget to the mayor and council, <coughs> we were able to make adjustments as to a position opened up, we make assumptions. We know that somebody left, we've replaced it. So the request line was what actually was needed at that point in time in December when those budgets were being put together. And as the process evolved, that we had updated information, is revised. So it's not really a cut that I've made to that budget, it reflects the data as of April 1 versus a working which document back to December. Which also includes we had our not to exceed back in um, end of November. By the time we we're preparing this, we knew what our rate was going to be. Okay. And we switched the plan that we were looking at, so we had a, a cost savings there. Okay. So, so it's, never mind. I get it. You get so it? I, I think we funded this to the appropriate level based on our current census and our current plans. It was just a work in progress from December <coughs> until the end of March. Okay. Do you expect any kind of changes between now and July 24th or whatever date we adopt the budget? We will revisit it again um, just to do one final update. We have seen actually based on some employer shifts in the region that some of the people who had opted out of our plan for whatever life-changing events are now choosing to come on our plan. So on the health insurance side, <coughs> we might see a request to have that number tick up, um, as in some years it's gone down where people have opted out and taken the buyout instead. We're seeing a few people come back onto the city plan right now, again, for reasons that are happening in their personal life. So we will modify it and bring whatever adjustments we need to uh, that are available to us over the next month or so. Okay. Go Any other on. questions on that? I think we're all set. Okay. The next uh, turn to page 47. That's the overall finance budget. 47 finance. Okay. <coughs> Uh, 
and overall that budget is uh, pretty much the same as it was in fiscal year um, 17 that includes payroll for 10 uh, full-time employees as well as a part-time treasurer um, included in here is your finance personnel um, purchasing your tax collector expenses including postage and your um, assistant um, clerk that works in the tax office to assist the tax collector as well as the IT staff so the majority of this budget is made up of salary line items and if you look at the overall expense line items those have actually gone down a little bit um, but pretty much just the same as as it has as la last year um, <coughs> I'm not really sure what else I can say about the budget, but it's, you know, we process all the um, AP, AR, um, the daily deposits. We do reconciliations of all the bank accounts and just making sure we have the cash flow to meet the needs of the city. <coughs> you anticipate any changes in the personnel needs in that department? Mm -hmm. I, um, not substantially. There might be a little bit of a reclassification on one particular position but nothing of any substance I think um, workloads okay workloads okay with the implementation of ADP which is our automated date payroll system it's gotten off to a slow start but it does save a lot of time for our payroll position and we're anticipating and in, uh, introducing that person into Come some in. more of the personnel related functions as a cross training did getting rid of the airport free up any time not really as, as Donna spoke, the ADP system, the, the paperless payroll system, is going to be a great time saver. And we've seen that. We've also got a very unique situation where several of our departments work 24 hours a day, seven, we seven days a week, and there's different overtime. So we rolled it out through City Hall first and then over to library. Uh, I think it was either the library or parks. Parks and, parks and then to public works. So the more challenging ones, as you can imagine, would be <coughs> police and fire, where they're mm -hmm. working three different shifts and there's shift differential and detail pay rates and different things factoring into it. But uh, once it's fully implemented, it's going to be a significant time saver where everything populates the payroll um, electronically. Any questions about the finance budget? Okay, oh. on to page 51, which is the um, insurance. The first line item there is the unemployment insurance, and that's gone down a little bit, um, primarily due to having a low um, rate of people applying for unemployment, and also our um, percentage of claims has gone down, and our actual unemployment uh, contribution rate has decreased it's not a lot but it's it's a little bit but if you can look back to 2013 and 14 you know it was about eight nine thousand dollars more mm -hmm. so we have made some Im uh, improvements in that area of course back then the uh, unemployment rate was a lot higher right. so one kind of counter balances the other um, the overall the next line item is the workers compensation line item and um, once again that's the overall workman's rate for fiscal year 18 has decreased slightly and that's resulted in estimated savings of approximately 30,000 for fiscal year 18 some of that's due to the fact of um, just better less less claims as well as our overall payroll in some areas due to changes in personnel and we've had some vacancies um, and so forth so that's contributed to there being a slightly lower a little bit of cost savings there the property and liability line um, that if you notice that has gone up about twenty thousand dollars and um, that increase is due to adjusted property values and the, the amount reflected in this budget is net of the sanitary sewer contribution and the water works contribution because they're all combined in our policy and because the sanitary sewer fund is an enterprise fund it does pay its own contribution for this but some of our values have increased so that's why there is an increase on that line item the other three line items for the wellness program safety training and claims those are all level funded um, overall the insurance bus budget estimate has decreased approximately six percent from fiscal year 17 questions about insurance okay we've got about five minutes Wrap it up. Yeah. 
Um, do you want to go over P&I now, or are you going to do, do that? welfare? Yeah, as far as the capital, do welfare. Okay. Lastly, if you want to turn to page 122, it's the welfare budget. 122. Two. Actually, 122. Actually, 123. Actually, 123, sorry. Um, basically, <coughs> uh, there are some changes and savings in the cost line as we've had some staffing changes in that area. Um, I think we're... We've made some positive changes, and, and um, I think that... Do we have a new welfare director now? We have a welfare tech, a new welfare tech. The other was a welfare specialist, and as this welfare tech garners more experience, she will most likely move up the, the, the grade level of her position, and we've hired a new um, secretary assistant for that position as well. So there's some cost savings there. Um, there's a we always tend to try to err on the side of caution in terms of the city relief line And we've been fortunate that we haven't fully expended that line over the past several years um, But we do assist approximately 275 clients with some type of assistance throughout the year um, We have approximately 3,000 to 3,500 phone calls of inquiries coming into the welfare office as well as 750 walk-in clients per year So they do see quite a bit of traffic um, and you know we try to keep track of all of those statistics so that and we keep a history and everybody that comes in here and they're required to fill out an application um, to determine whether or not they're eligible for assistance from the city and there are numerous referrals that happen so if it's a situation where the city is you know is in in their position to assist by statute we're able to work with other service agencies in the region and make the referrals mm -hmm. so there's a certain okay. number that we've assisted but plenty more that we have referred and gotten to the appropriate places to help us get the, what their needs are taken care of. Any questions? So for those who don't have the book in front of them, the, the, um, the city total city welfare budget is about half actual. Um, it's about half salary. Payments and half salaries. Right. About 50% of the budget goes to actual relief. Correct. Any other questions? <coughs> okay, do we have any more? I think we'll, that's, that's it for finance. We'll take up the, the, uh, the debt service schedule on the principal and, and interest. Budget. We can tie that into the capital end when we start yep. talking about it during the administration. Okay, so uh, with, uh, without objection from anyone on the council, I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at uh, 6.57 p.m. And uh, we will begin the regular council meeting in three minutes.